Hey peeps, it's Triple L, and now it is time for One Piece Chapter 834, My Dream. And we all know who that chapter title is referring to. But anyway, this chapter, actually, it's rather interesting. I think, to me anyway, this chapter feels a lot like a setup chapter. And when you look at how many different things we got in this chapter, because the perspective was changing a lot. We got like five different scenes. We got the Sanji follow up. We got the catch up with Brooke. We got the Capone and Peckham's conflict. We got Caesar and Big Mom and their exchange. And we got the Luffy update at the end. So we were jumping around the place quite a bit. The most cons like, well, the heaviest part of the chapter was probably Brooke's catch up. And then uh, Caesar kind of got a bit of, he got maybe three or four pages. So looking at it, it feels like a setup chapter, but at the same time, we're getting a lot of things going on. So overall, I think it's a very worthwhile chapter and the pacing because of that is like just it's a fast pace like the pacing of the One Piece chapters post Dressrosa has been great. This is a welcome change. If they could keep the pacing up like this, it'd be great. Uh, some of the scenes I felt were a bit jarring the transitions between them, but that's fine. That that'll happen when you have this kind of pacing. Anyway, let's actually talk about this chapter because I did very much enjoy it. The Sanji follow up. It's okay. I very much enjoy it. I like seeing Sanji actually freaking out over the situation. It was a very short thing. It just shows his frustrations. I think this is a very valuable bit of the chapter because it does show that maybe Sanji's mind isn't the happiest place to be right now. And that's, that obviously, it makes sense. He's, he's being forced to marry a girl that's, you know, he thinks is beautiful, but he really doesn't want to. And yeah, he can't really do much about the situation. Anyway, the next part of the chapter, which has a lot of information and I think it's going to be very important moving forward, is pretty much Brooke and Pedro and them finding out the situation. So Brooke and Pedro right now have a lot of information in regards to the status of their crew. They know that they're in trouble. They know that they're pretty much screwed because it seems like these guys know. And now with the exchanges with, uh, what you might call it, Pudding, right. Pudding and seeing what Tamago is saying, they're at a point, or at least we as a readers actually, can t say, possibly, that maybe Pudding wasn't involved in the whole thing with the Straw Hats getting ambushed. Because when you look at it, it seems like Big Mom does have a pretty good surveillance network. Really, all it would have taken was communication from the people that Peckums had already notified that he had returned and the ones that saw him in the Straw Hats boat. So if they had communicated that they saw Peckham's in the area, that by itself would have given enough reason to surveil or keep an eye on the Thousand Sunny. And there's nothing saying that there was no one watching them when they first docked at the first town they went to. So this whole process could have been without pudding because we just don't know how intricate big mom's surveillance network is like she is a f like one of the four emperors you would think she'd have something that's just incredible and just very powerful to deal with and that might just be her information network what if everyone's just really good at communicating like even just seeing the pictures that they have of uh, the minks i think that's worthwhile enough to maybe suggest that pudding might not have anything to do with the ambush of the straw hats and even if you look at brooke and Pedro's actual exchange in one of the panels where they're talking about um, let me see oh how they could gather intel so greatly how is it that they're gathering intel and when you when you look at the panel you will see flowers right there looking at them so when you have that situation where the characters are asking how are they gathering all this information so well and Oda is going as far as to show you the flowers are right in front of them. Come on, it's over. Like they're already caught. Every straw hat was already in problems once they got into Big Mom's territory. Because if we have living plants, and this is effectively a confirmation by Oda himself, if we see plants with face watching the straw hats or watching Brooke and Pedro, we know this is how they're getting their information. It's not just a it's not just maybe pudding. It might just be a really effective information network. So I like that, that that this chapter at least gives us this kind of confirmation or it gives us this possibility. It puts pudding in a better light if it comes through. Now, 
to Mago. He's saying some interesting things in this chapter and mostly that he knows how Pedro works and that he was kind of hoping he would run into Peckham's. And I thought that was nice. I think it was a nice little bit for Tamago. And I it, that was actually one of the better transitions because after this, we got the Capone and Peckham scene. So having pretty much Tamago set up that scene was a nice use of the character. But anyway, to back to Brooke and Pedro, they are in pretty big trouble. But hey, they also found out the situation with Jimbei. And through them, we find out that Jimbei was called a coward like he actually went back on or you know backtracked on what he was saying to big mom and ran away or he because he didn't want to pay the price okay well, that's a load of baloney we all know that's a load of baloney i think jimbe would have tried i think he would have gone for it or he might have tried to get his way out of the possibility of being killed either way i don't think it was as cowardly as people are making it seem like big mom is controlling information so obviously she'd want to paint jimbe in a worse light but for all of us that know Jimbei, I don't think it went down that way. But if she's going out of her way to ridicule Jimbei's image, it might suggest that he is actually still alive and that maybe we're going to see him pretty soon. In which case, I would very much welcome it. And I just like Brooke's inner thoughts on this matter because I think it's nice to see how Brooke is kind of thinking back to Jimbei's behavior. Anyway, moving on, let's move into the Capone and Peckham scene. Because I thought this was a brutal scene. First thing, it clarified who the husband is to... What's her name again? Ah, right. Chiffon. So, it clarified that Capone Bag is actually the husband and... Okay, that's whatever. And it confirms that they actually had a son. And let me just tell you, it's actually kind of funny seeing this kid. He is so ugly. It's just that little gruff that he has on the upper lip. I just think that's... That's that's funny. It's funny, but it's also ugly. He's he's cute in a very ugly way. He's like a pug. That's how I'll say. But anyway, the Capone and Peckham scene is pretty brutal, and it really I think establishes Capone as probably the harshest of the supernova. Like man, this guy he lives up with his motif though. I think he does keep consistent with his character and what's been established so far. So how do I feel about the situation? Well, in this situation i don't like capone because peckham's yeah he is effectively a pirate i mean he is a pirate he's a pirate of a yonko so naturally he's probably done some pretty shitty things in the past like we've seen him kind of extort fisherman island he's probably killed a lot of people he probably killed a lot of innocent people but still i don't feel all that great seeing peckham's treated like this by capone i i don't know really you could say Peckham's had it come with him. He's a bad guy. You know, he could go. But to the readers, he's been presented as a slightly likable character because he has these kind of values and morals. So the question really becomes, what are you weighing? Are you going to weigh the fact, oh, you know, he's actually really nice on the inside. But then you look at it. No, he is still a pirate. He probably would kill people without like giving a second thought if they aren't minks. So it's a weird kind of thing with Peckham's. But for me, I just... I don't like seeing Peckham in this kind of position. I think it's a good character moment for Capone. But with Peckham's falling in the water and with us knowing that Jimbei's crew is still a factor in all of this, I could very easily see one of Jimbei's crew coming in and saving Peckham's once the dust has settled. So that would be a very interesting kind of solution to Peckham's safety. But if Peckham actually dies, well then, I would respect that. I would very much respect that. I mean, it's a new world, right? Let's let's make death permanent. Let's make it happen. If you are a slightly important character, you might die. Let's do that. Anyway, the Peckhams and Capone scene, it might be the highlight of the chapter for me. I very much love it. And I love the Brooke scene as well, just because it's Brooke and it gave us a bit of information that we can kind of think about for a while. Let's move on to the next segment of the chapter which is Caesar and Big Mom. And let me just tell you, this segment was probably the most annoying to me. I just, I didn't like it, but it does establish that Caesar's gonna be important for a bit while longer. And hey, we get to see Caesar again. So actually, Caesar's first page, I thought that was very entertaining. Him having his inner monologue about what he did with Big Mom's money, how it, impossible it is to accomplish Big Mom's dream, and how he had his favorite girls from his favorite girl ship come to the island, he snuck them in. That was funny. It's 
it's funny to see Caesar's worst traits in full display like that. And I don't know, man. I, I kind of just want to keep seeing more of Caesar for that reason. But it was also just a very annoying exchange. I think it's just the way those pages were structured. It was just very annoying. But through all of it, we got to found, find out that Big Mom's wish is to sit at eye level with everyone in the world, every race, and have dinner as a family, pretty much. And, you know, on one level, it's like, oh, that's adorable. Then on one level, it's like, okay, you know, you're kind of really, kind of really crazy there. You're kind of, that's, that's a pretty, that's interesting. So she wants to make herself giant. And that goes back to the whole giantification process. And Caesar's pretty much saying that it's not possible. It worked with kids, but it meant even then they were going to die. And we see how much Big Mom wants this because she goes out of her way to make a lab replication of Punk Hazard, kind of. And she goes out of her way to give, you know, Caesar time and money. I think Big Mom's leniency on this whole matter is probably the biggest sign that she really wants this and she really values Caesar. So that's very interesting. And I kind of want to see where we go with that. I think Caesar is probably just going to end up buying time until the rest of the Straw Hats get there. Like Luffy's section gets there and kind of saves him. Till then it's going to be interesting. And through Caesar, we get to meet one of the firstborns of the family. The guy that can manipulate Candy. Presperone or something like that. So that was interesting. It's a new character. I, I kind of like his design. He looks kind of like Caesar. But overall, I'm rooting for Caesar in this one. I kind of want to see his character get a bit more redemption because like we just got a lot of douchebaggery with his monologue so it'll be interesting to see where it goes with caesar and uh finally the last page is the luffy update we find out there has been a little bit of a time skip between chapters it's now nighttime and luffy is finding copies of everyone so the biggest question is is this still the power of the mirror fruit or the reflection fruit that lady that horrible ugly looking witch is this still the power of her fruit in effect? Is it some kind of thing where she needs to kind of touch someone to make more copies of them? Because there's more than one reflection. So it's going to actually be really interesting to see how that gets explained. Or if there's another devil fruit user nearby. Regardless, you know, this chapter gives you a lot to think about. It sets up something with Peckhams. It pretty much uh, tells you what Caesar is doing. It follows with Sanji's frustration. And it kind of elaborates a bit more on the Jinbei situation. And it kind of shows that Pudding was held back by her retainers. So we're going to have to see where it goes from here. But uh, for me, I really like this chapter. I'm pretty excited for next week for sure. So peeps, let me know what you think. And uh, I guess I'll just end it there. Till next time, have a good day.